Two more players you want to hear about, Zach Geloff and Merrill Kelly, up next on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5 on Saturday, March 2nd. I am Frank Stanfield, joined by Scott White. And let's start this off with Zach Geloff, who last year came up, Scott, and wowed us, wound up hitting 267 with 14 homers and 14 steals. He added 12 homers and 20 steals in the minors. So for those counting at home, 26 homers, 34 steals between the majors and the minors. Some questionable plate discipline um, under the hood, Scott. How do you feel about mm -hmm. uh, Zach Geloff this season? I feel good. I feel better than it seems like uh, most people do. And it's it's kind of funny that it turned out that way because uh, as Zach, Zach Geloff was, was debuting last year, obviously performing well, I was among the loudest skeptics. I, I said, well, he has to slow down. Look at how much he's striking out. Look at how bad his zone contact rate is. It's below 80%, which is among the worst in baseball. Um, so if you're, you're swinging and missing that much and um, you're doing it as somebody who doesn't generate like high, high-end exit velocities, that's a mismatch. That that generally doesn't add up to big fantasy production. And look, Geloff did slow down a little, but he, he didn't crater the way I thought he did. And, and when you consider that he brings so much speed in addition to the power, I mean, you, you gave the full season numbers in the minors, but that's not over like a full season number of games. It's not like over 150 games. He was performing... Uh, like a 30-30 man last year with Zach Geloff, which is, of course, at the high end of what you should expect, and he's certainly not being drafted like that. But he's not even really being drafted like he has 2020 potential. I mean, he's going quite a bit after uh, the Bryson Stott, Andres Jimenez, even, I mean, compared to Hassan Kim, on average, Geloff is going like four or five rounds later. And I think he has more upside. I, I think if you if you want to make an upside comparison for Zach Geloff, it's it's uh, Matt McLean. Um, I, I think they both have similar swing and miss concerns. They both produce more power than you'd expect for somebody who who delivers the exit velocities they do. So they they kind of both have the same uh, downside cases, but they have the same upside cases too. And in, in terms of of that power speed combo they're able to deliver at a position where power isn't that all that common. Yeah, I, I think the uh, Matt McClain comp is probably the one we go to most, and the ADP over the past week over at the NFBC is 74 for Matt McClain, and it's 141 for Zach Geloff. And don't get me wrong, there are limitations with Geloff. He obviously plays on the Oakland A's. It's a bad lineup. I get that. But again, you, you take a peek under the hood... The average exit velocity, the barrel rate, the sprint speed, all better than Matt McLean last season. So I'm not saying he's going to be better, but they probably should not be going about 70 picks apart in ADP right now either. Let's yep. let's slide over to Merrill Kelly, Scott. And uh, last year, a career season for Merrill Kelly. You look at what he's done the past two years. He's been extremely serviceable. And specifically in 2023, the strikeout rate went up, and that was due to an improved changeup. Now... We don't know for sure that that strikeout rate is going to carry over, but if it does, it could turn out that Merrill Kelly is a pretty big value where he's going in drafts right now. Yeah, so in a year that was defined by like blow-up pitching performances, even for good pitchers, uh, with, with all the rule changes, the the, the shift ban, and, and all the extra base activity, the pitch clock, just we saw... Uh, we saw a tendency for pitchers to have this runaway inning where everything snowballs and they put up a crooked stat line. And Merrill Kelly pretty much managed to avoid that, uh, finishing with the 329 ERA. Uh, so I want to put him in the glob that I talk about so often where, where pitchers, they're, they're, they, don't have, they don't perform up to a standard that um, would allow them to distinguish themselves from that kind of random number generating mess that the new inter environment introduced last year. It seems like Merrill Kelly would fall victim to that, but he managed to escape it all season long last year. So can he do it again? Was it just luck? Uh, should we expect closer to a 350, 380 ERA when all things are said and done? 
My hunch is yes, because all the all the ways we usually evaluate pitchers say so. His ERA estimators, you know, 385 FIP versus that 329 ERA. Um, I don't have, let me see if I can get that X ERA, the expected ERA 413 was the expected ERA. So even worse. Um, and it's not like he's a great control pitcher before last year. He wasn't even a strikeout per inning guy. He is an innings eater and should be competent. Uh, I suppose at age 35, it could all collapse, but I'm not expecting that from Merrill Kelly. It's more just, I'm not it doesn't seem likely that he could be quite that good again. The good news is nobody's drafting him like he's going to be quite that good again. And so um, it's not like I'm avoiding him drafts. If anything, I'm, I'm probably a little ahead of consensus on Merrill Kelly. But uh, but if, if you've sent skepticism over his 2023 performance, that's what it's all about. The ADP for Mer- Merrill Kelly, 138.6 as the 39th starting pitcher off the board. That comes according to Fantasy Pros. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, and we'll be back again next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 